All right, so let's use the dot paper here to create a tessellation based on the figure that's being shown here. And what we have is a triangle. And you can see that one edge is length uh, is going from one dot to the diagonal to the other of uh, the next dot. And then you have another dot that is a couple steps over. So one way we can do this is let's form, uh, let's repeat this dot here and continue over here and then connect. And now we have um, a congruent shape that the triangle repeated, only it's been rotated. And I can repeat here. And let's see, if I continue, let's say I can go And if I had more dots, I could do it more. But there is some tessellation. And you can see that I can, you know, I can keep in, uh, I can keep doing this forever, um, as long as I had dots to put to put them on. But um, this can go on. And as far as this shape, as in terms of a tessellation, well, one way you can do this is if we form. I imagine here we form this, combined like this, and now we have a rectangle, and we can repeat this rectangle. And then keep repeating it over and over again. So that is one example. It's not the only way to do a tessellation, but uh, this is one way we could tessellate using this shape. So this shape here does tessellate. In general, a plane can be tiled by any triangular tile will tessellate. Um, whether it's equilateral triangle or any type of triangle, it will tessellate. Any quadrilateral tile will tessellate. Um, whether it's convex or concave, it will tessellate. Some pentagonal tiles will tessellate, and you see some examples here. Um, not all pentagons tessellate. For instance, the regular pentagon does not tessellate. Some hexagonal tiles tessellate. The regular hexagon does, but not all hexagons tessellate. So, and these are just some examples of uh, tilings with congruent, congruent polygonal tiles. Well, can the uh, figures here tessellate the plane? If so, try to make a drawing of them. If not, explain why not. So for the first one is an arrow Maybe. Um, we'll, well, let's give it a try. Uh, second one, um, you have that, a square with little squares attached on the sides. Third one is sort of a, uh, it has, what, it has seven sides, or it has six sides, but one side is curved. Uh, that looks doubtful. The fourth one is a trapezoid. And as we already saw, that every quadrilateral tessellates. So I know part D does. But for part A, that does tessellate. And here is an example of putting together those pieces of those different arrows. Um, you can see that you could form a tessellation. B, not so much. It's just those squares. If there are those squares on the edges of that big square, if they're a little bit larger, it would work. Um, or if they're just sized a little bit differently, it would work. But in this case here, we're going to end up with gaps. Or if I try to force it, I would end up with overlaps. C does not tessellate those that those curves, that curved uh, segment, and uh, the two line segments. They just don't match very well. There's going there's going to be gaps. And as we know, every quadrilateral tessellates. So this trapezoid does tessellate. You can like flip it over, create a parallelogram, and keep repeating those over and over. So in summary, that arrow type shape, uh, it was just designed uh, well enough to that it does indeed tessellate. The uh, the big square, the little two squares or rectangles on the sides, uh, it's just not sized quite right, so it doesn't tessellate. The one where you have a curved edge on one side, that doesn't tessellate. It just, you know, 
round edge straight versus straight edges, they don't fit very well. But the trapezoid also does tessellate. 